Hello, Macy here. The spirit of Kerbin and House in One are safely at Lave, but the Isprit Squadron and the Vanguard are still in transit. And if you remember, the Vanguard has completely run out of fuel. Um, the time has come for me to try and get this in. It's going to be a daunting task. I have entertained several different ways of doing this, but I think I'm just going to rely on what remains of its RCS fuel and um, see if I can just get some sort of orbit and then I can refuel it at a later date which is going to be difficult in itself but at least we can get it to lathe and um, we can take it from there it's not going to be combat effective which is going to be a problem it's very vulnerable but one step at a time on a side note um, I did actually miss last week's upload and for that I'm sorry so in the hope that you'll forgive me I've put this episode the flight of the vanguard and the next episode into one bumper edition for you so um, this is the longest video of mine by far and I hope you enjoy it the Isprit formation is the first to get capture so I'm just tweaking this on its way in and now I'm going to go back to the vanguard here and make sure I've got capture here now I do still have some sort of capture here but it's not very good and if you can see the angle I'm coming in at is not great because I don't want to get into some um, highly elliptical orbit because it's just going to make it ever so much harder to refuel it so I'm going to try and change my trajectory here as much as possible just using the RCS thrusters as you can see here to try and flatten out that trajectory from as far away as I can because I want to get if I can of course make this orbit I mean I may not be able to make it at all but um, if I can I do want it to be an equatorial orbit because it makes it so much more easy to rescue it. Um, I can't afford to burn too much RCS um, here because I'm going to need as much as I can to actually obtain the orbit but I'm just trying to get this capture into a prograde orbit because from that capture I couldn't tell from where I gained the capture right out of the system but as I've come close I can see it's going to be a um, retrograde which isn't good but now I've changed that and as you saw I had it perfectly flat it's thrown it out again so I'm going to have to use even more RCS now to get this as flat as I can and that's about um, as much as I can do from out here but I'm just bringing in my periapsis here so it's just brushing lathe um, for our air braking maneuver so that's about as much as we can do for now so let's get over to the Isprit squadron and try and get this into orbit I'm going to aim for about one kilometer lower in the atmosphere this time because we're much sleeker we're much more aerodynamic and we have lift on the wings so I think we can afford to go a little deeper, but um, let's see how it pans out. Okay, you can see I underestimated that a little bit and um, I've stayed in the atmosphere too long and it's pulled in the far side of my orbit so this is um, <laughs> a problem but I do have lots of fuel so I've just engaged my engine and I've just kept up my orbit by pushing the far side up and keeping a bit of thrust on it which is fine because I do have plenty of fuel left but if I did that with the Vanguard it would be game over so let that be a warning. Um, I'm at the ascending node here, just flattening out that orbit and uh, matching the spirit of Kerbin so they can rendezvous at any time should they need to. And this is just a final burn 
to uh, circularize it and there we go so the Isprit squadron is here it's safe and um, but that's only half the story we need to now get the vanguard in which is going to be um, much harder and let's hope we can get it a little bit better so I'm not going to risk going um, deep into the atmosphere I'm going to try and do exactly as I did with the spirit of Kerbin so I'm going to go for 18 um, or thereabouts now I'm closer to Lave I can see that I'm a bit skew if coming in and that's too much of an eccentric orbit for my liking but the ascending node here where I'd need to change that is so close to Lave that I doubt I'm going to be able to make much difference with the fuel I've got so I'm just going to have to surrender to the fact that this is not going to be a very good orbit and it will require some extra fuel from whoever refuels it to rescue it but um, it's the best I can do for now I'm just tweaking it a few more times on the way in and you can see my fuel up at the top right there but I do still have a substantial amount of propellant left but um, now I've got to this ascending node I'm going to try this um, inclination change it's not going to make much of a difference but I think I can afford to burn a little bit because it will help me in the long run if I can flatten this out as much as possible but this is so close to the target and we're going so fast that it's not very efficient so I think that's about as much as I can do from here but it has changed it a little bit it has made it um, slightly better so time for the error braking maneuver um, we're traveling at a similar sort of speed to the spirit of Kerbin so I've gone for the same 18 kilometers so now it's just down to the gods and a lot of luck Oh no, please no, please no, no, this is bad, this is really bad, it's because my engines are heavier, considerably so, than my nose, and um, I've mentioned this before, but you should really go in backwards when you're doing aero braking manoeuvres, and I'm a fool not to, I mean this could be catastrophic, because things can come off with the amount of inertial forces going on, but it's holding together so far, I did build this quite solidly and I'm just fighting it here just trying to turn it round and keep it from swinging too hard but this is a dangerous because the amount of drag I'm creating here and my center of gravity shifting around so much is going to pull in my orbit much quicker than I wanted to but we've got through the worst of it we're pulling out I'm regaining control slowly we seem to all still be together and we're out we're out but have we spent too long in atmosphere have we created too much drag are we going to be able to get into a nice clean orbit to do that I'm gonna need enough time in vacuum um, to be able to lift my periaps out of atmosphere and so not decay on the next time round and that apoapse is dangerously close but I think it's okay it's still coming in but it's slowing down. I think we're going to be okay. Well, that was lucky. That's all I can say. And um, I think we're free. So that's the first half done. And now I'm up at the apoapse. I'm going to um, try and burn prograde and lift the far side out of atmosphere. But I have underestimated how much it was going to take to do that. And it's happening quite slowly. And if you can see, I'm already past my apoaps and I'm now heading back towards the moon and um, I just need to lift it just far enough out so it's not going to degrade me too much um, but it's not very efficient burning from anywhere else so I'm just going to just risk that I'm just going to brush through the atmosphere here and you notice I'm going engine first this time I'm in very tenuous upper layers but even so hands burnt lesson learnt um, 
on the way out, I'm just going to do a quick burn where my orbit crosses the equator here and just one final attempt to try and flatten this out a bit. And then I'm burning what remains of my fuel, every last breath of it, to lift my periaps as high as I can out of atmosphere here. I only have to get it above 50 or 55 to stay in orbit. So I've managed that. So Spirit Wolf's heavy cavalry has arrived in the system. Um, it's here safely, but it's completely useless at the moment without fuel um, and this orbit is very eccentric so it's very hard to rendezvous with this and I don't really have the right size docking ports to uh, refuel this in any conventional way and it's going to be very hard to directly dock it to the spirit of Kerbin so I really need to work out what I'm going to do about this for the minute the colonists at Halcyon 1 are very pleased to know that the Vanguard has made it into the system safely but they also know how vulnerable it is which is adding to tensions but now a much more disturbing discovery has everyone very much on edge during a routine transmission to the spirit of Kerbin from Al's medium wave radio transmitter a carrier wave has been detected um, containing some sort of numerical code which could be coordinates so alarms have been raised and the Spirit of Kerbin have been informed of these findings and using the other ships in orbit they have managed to triangulate the source signal which has an origin somewhere in the dual system but further analysis has revealed that it is most probably Val which is the second moon out um, from Lave. This news has done nothing to raise the morale of the already volatile mood of the Spirit of Kerbin's crew but at least Red 2 is going to have some time away from the melting pot as he's received his orders to go and scout Val for further signs of this signal or at worst enemy activity. He is fully aware of how dangerous his mission can be in such a lightly armed ship and they have very short range these mosquitoes so breaking orbit is going to be a risk and he's going to be very far from rescue if anything goes wrong but this is the first time we're going to take one of these light mosquito fighters out of range of the carrier but he's going to be very alone out there in the black but anything to get away from this ship's crew at the moment so here he is boarding his fighter I think I'm going to take one torpedo with me I don't want to take any more because it's going to be too heavy I think and I don't really want to go with an unarmed fighter so this is just one torpedo on board with the automatic reloader that you've seen in previous episodes so let's get him on his way it really has been hell on the spirit of Kerbin, with both Bill Jr. and First Officer Bill hardly ever coming out of their cabins, mainly for their own safety. The mood has been volatile in the extreme, and um, people are convinced that there is now Hanlan traitors on board the spirit of Kerbin, and people are looking for blood. So hopefully we can get this resolved and get things back to normal. Gordon here doesn't really know what to think anymore he's just glad to be able to fly out and be on his own for a, a few days but nonetheless a very daunting task so now the bird is free of the hangar time to spread her wings and we'll get this ion drive online and drink deep for a moment laves blue serenity so I've just positioned myself prograde here to leave the moon actually in prograde relative to Joule as well. So I'm just firing up the iron drives here. Um, and there's a problem. We haven't got power. We haven't got enough power. Now I didn't realise this before, or maybe it wasn't modelled before, but of course we're much further from the sun out here, much further from the sun. And of course we're not getting as much power as I had hoped. So we're going to have to run at half power which is not very efficient on xenon fuel either and it's going to take me a very long time to break orbit here. But of course we have no other option but to continue the mission. There are Kerbal's lives at stake here and we need to find the source of this carrier signal. But I'm going to have to go several times around this orbit before I can build up the sort of velocity I need to um, break orbit. 
I'm keeping the power on for an entire third of the orbit until I lose sight of the sun completely. And then I'm just going to um, forward time until I get back round to the other side. Until that entire third half of my orbit here, I will just burn and hope for the best. But the problem is, if this takes too long, then I'm going to lose my transfer window um, with Val, which was, it won't be there forever. So if I have to go around too many times, I'm going to end up in the wrong position to be able to get to Val, or at least I'm going to have to expend far more fuel to get there, and could leave myself in orbit around Jewel, which I don't really want to do. Spending months in space isn't going to help alleviate the current crisis. So here I am going around the third time, engage my own engines again, but I've given up, I'm worried now, so I'm starting to use some propellant to um, try and get a bit more speed here because I can't afford to go around another time because I will lose that window and um, like I've said, we don't want to do that. I've sped up time here so you can see my progress, but I'm determined to leave lathe this time round. Um, regardless of how much propellant that's going to cost me and it is making me a bit lighter actually so it does help and there you can see my escape at last but I'm now heading off in completely the wrong direction because I should have been going prograde leaving the system prograde but because it's gone round a quarter orbit I'm now in the wrong place so that's what it looks like I've had to use more fuel than I would have liked because I have to go beyond the orbit of Val and then come back in again so it can catch me up and this is a image I wanted to show you which is a eclipse of Jewel by Lathe, looks like a lizard's eye, quite a strange thing to see out here in the depths of space and there's Val drawing ever closer. So here I am trying to make capture, you, you probably noticed by now I haven't used a single maneuver node in this video so far because you can't really with these slow velocities and they don't really help so much so it's best to do it by eye when you're using ion drives and um, I'm just tweaking this capture so I can get a really low orbit to um, make sufficient reconnaissance I just hope I've got enough retro to um, slow me down and still have the fuel to get back but we'll see but if anyone can do it, Auden can back on house in one the hot topic is who is the Hanland spy which isn't doing morale any good this is equally not a nice place to be at the moment some people doing more of the talking than others and others choosing not to get involved so much but everyone is feeling the strain and everyone is afraid and everyone wants to know what's going on meanwhile on the spirit of Kerbin the officers are trying to decide what to do in the short term about the vanguard in its precarious position and they've decided that the only thing they can do at the moment is to send an Isprit to guard it, its own escort in case of any attack. Um, so here I am at the point at which our orbits cross and I'm just going to change the inclination of this orbit and then get it to match the orbit of the Vanguard and as long as it is in the same orbit, as long as any ship is in the same orbit as another ship um, then they can always rendezvous at very short notice you may be asking why I don't just dock with it and refuel it with what I've got here and as you can see I've got lots of fuel in this left over but the problem is I don't actually have the right size docking port to dock um, with the Vanguard it only has small docking ports on it which is another in oversight on um, my part as usual um, but the only thing that can really dock with it is a mosquito and the mosquito can't carry any fuel so it's going to be difficult. I am thinking about how to solve that. I do have a plan. Um, but for now I'm just going to leave an escort here. I didn't design this ship to work like this. It was really supposed to just deploy all three ships at the same time. But I can see no reason why I can't just drop one ship off like this and then continue with the rest and deploy them elsewhere. Um, so in a way this is actually working better than design specs because I can just drop up to three fighters in separate locations with full fuel they don't have to use any fuel to get into position so here it is full of fuel the first naval Isprit which is now in the same orbit as the Vanguard full of fuel and fully armed so now I want to take the um, the remaining two Isprits 
back to the orbit of the Spirit of Kerbin, which is what I want to be the benchmark for my fleet, that particular orbit, equatorial orbit. So here I am just burning back to where we were initially. With Red 2 still only halfway to its destination, the mood down on Halcyon 1 is reaching breaking point and people are beginning to suffer as people are drawing sides and pointing fingers. Most of the drama seems to be originating from and centering on the four civilians who are constantly at each other's throats and the reality TV program is making millions back on Kerbin because the conflict is feeding the ratings yet some I think just want to be alone and wish they were very far from here however all this infighting is not going down very well with Captain Chad Brett and he thinks it's about time something was done about this and so he's radioed in to the spirit of Kerbin and has requested a military presence to be down on the colony until this traitor if there is even a traitor is found and we can put an end to this for good but this is not a good thing for Spirit Wolf it's a serious blow we did not want any military intervention down planet side because it is a civilian and scientific unit and it doesn't do well if we have to have Spirit Wolf military personnel keeping the peace it doesn't do our Spirit Wolf building better worlds initiative much good does it so Blue Leader has been ordered to make Planetfall and land at the colony. He's also been told to keep his pistol on him at all times until the traitor has been named and apprehended. So a very sour day indeed for Spirit Wolf. So here I am just putting in the orbit here on the far side, overshooting my mark by a good tenth of an orbit and that should get me pretty close to the colony so let's get this Isprit on the ground
time to fire up the engines. This is the first time I've used any fuel. It's got down from orbit, not using a breath of fuel so far. As you know, these Isprits have got very short range, so this was only a viable option if I could get it down with nearly maximum fuel. But fully armed and full of fuel, I am expecting this to be difficult, but it's all about trying to get it down as quickly as I can with as much fuel remaining as I can. The problem is I've hit quite a wall of lag here because of all the kerbals I've got running around everywhere. It's become very hard to control it at this point but I'm just trying to ease it in very slowly very slowly. We've done this a hundred times before back on kerb and it should be routine. We're just a little bit heavier than we normally would. So I'm just going to try and find my shadow and use that to touch down. But no! Oh, you're kidding me. Okay, I think what's happened is that I've landed on a hill. And because I'm on a hill, it's put too much weight on that back leg. Because it looked like I'd landed okay, but then the leg snapped. So, disaster. Damn. Now I've folded the rest of the legs away. It actually is staying stable because these little nodules here which are left over from the squadron stage these separators are actually acting as legs and keeping it stable so it's not too bad although I'm not looking forward to landing this again so Nelton has got out to inspect the damage not best pleased and slightly embarrassed in fact it's a great shame that KSP doesn't have duct tape because that is all that would be required to fix that it's just not that back leg off, which is infuriating, but so far from home it is actually impossible to fix. So note to self, don't land an Isprit full of fuel and missiles on an incline, especially on lathe. Um, or maybe I should have just come down softer, I don't know. Pilot error, I'm sure, was to blame as well. So this is Captain Chad Brett, first time ever out of his command room at the top. Very elusive man, Captain Chad Brett, but he's made a special occasion here to come and greet his fellow Spirit Wolf employee, and they certainly have much to talk about. Although the topic of conversation will be a dark one, but I'm sure they will find out between them who this spy is and put an end to whatever dastardly plan he may or may not have. Chad Brett has asked Merbald if she can keep the cameras away from the Spirit Wolf personnel as they go about their business because we don't want this to be public but hope you enjoyed this bye for now